Welcome to Schofield Farm. I'm Carice and today we're going to do a January garden tour, a mid-January garden tour. It's probably going to be the only January garden tour this year because I am having shoulder surgery very soon but I still want to show you what the garden looks like each month. And so it doesn't actually look that terribly different than December. You'll have to go back and watch a December video to compare and see what you think. To me, I've done a little bit of cleanup. A few things are growing a little bit more, but it's, it's fairly similar. The winter garden is fairly similar for a while until it warms up a little bit and really starts to take off. Let's get started. I want to take you through and kind of show you what things are looking like right now on this beautiful day. It's a beautiful winter day. We've had a lot of rain. A lot of rain is coming, but we've got a break and it was beautiful, sunny in the 60s. It's getting a little bit more chilly right now, but I, I can deal with this when it's not soaking wet and cold. The first place I want to show you is what used to be our potato patch and now we have peas growing up. They are growing very slow and honestly, they have a lot of bird pressure and they are not growing fast enough to keep up with the birds, so they're not all dead but they're very sad looking just because you can see how birds are kind of eating away at them. But they will be very lovely once they all fill in. I do have this cilantro right here, which we're going to pick from some of this for dinner tonight. I love cilantro even as volunteers. I will take it and it grows here really well in the winter. But I can just imagine these peas growing up and going around these little trellises and I think they'll look rather nice. Hi, Sam. How are you today? He is our alpha rooster and he's always coming over to see if I have any char to feed him through the garden fence. So yeah, some of these are worse for the wear than others. See this one? It basically has been completely eaten. I hope that as it warms up, that one too over there, I hope as it warms up that these will leaf out without so much pressure from all the birds. Now we already harvested those potatoes during our December garden tour. We'll come over here to where I have my self-watering pots that have asparagus in them. The asparagus isn't growing, but we do have some different mustards in here. It's very beautiful. This is a Mitsuna. A couple other mustards. I think there's some dill here and there. Yeah, this is dill, a little bit of cilantro, a weed, a little more cilantro and mustards and dill. It's kind of quiet because I didn't purposely grow anything here. There just happened to be some volunteers from last year. Over here where we used to have watermelon and purple beans growing up, we have mustards and chard. We have mustards right here that we have eaten from a lot. I just go ahead, you can see right here, I pick the outer leaves and I leave the inner ones to grow up to be more. And then over here we have a pot of chard on each side. Now this is where I had purple beans, but these chards are gonna do really well and we really like chard in the garden. The next area we're gonna look at is right over here. It's a brassica bed and it has some parsley there on the end that is looking so good. Look at that parsley. And I harvested a bunch of it for ourselves. I harvested a bunch of it for a produce box that I traded with a local gal for some eggs. Oh, the end of that doesn't look so great. This is actually a Chinese cabbage and something is going to town eating the leaves. It's either cabbage worms or it is birds. But the way they're eaten on the edges here make me suspect birds as being part of it. You know, that's kind of my winter garden right now. If I come in here sometimes I actually startle a bunch of birds that have been going to town. Yeah, they're a little chomped on. When you do organic gardening, you're going to have different pests around and I don't do spray and stuff. So I just have to deal with the pest pressure and I can pick stuff off or, you know, that kind of stuff, but it's not, it's not the same as like being bug free. These are beautiful. Look at that. The color is just outstanding in the garden. I love having purple in the garden. It is so pretty. Those are a red acre cabbage. And then that's the Nozaki Chinese cabbage in the back. And up front here, I believe these are some cauliflower that I have. It might be Snowball or Durgesh. I can't remember right now which ones I planted up front, but they are doing well. There is no cauliflower in them that I know of. Nope. But I like that the plants are getting bigger. Over here we have some broccolis. 
and they are still pretty small. Oh, look, there's some little broccolis coming up there. One right there. They're very small. I really probably should feed them because I want them to get bigger. But, you know, I'm kind of a lazy winter gardener. My son just handed me through the garden fence this beautiful egg. Our chickens have been on a really big lane break, lane strike, winter vacation. And anyway, this one I think is a newer layer because this feels like a new color to me. He says this is blue, but I think that this is sort of in the green olive family. And that would be the first time that we're getting green eggs, olive eggs. And we've tried so long with just getting backyard mixes of chicks and a lot of them into Brewsters. And this is such a pretty color. Yes, victory. This next bed has a ton of garlic in it. This is where I grew my hot peppers and we put so much garlic in here. There's also some different cabbages that I fed in December with a little bit of fish emulsion and I would totally feed them again. But in reality, I don't know if I will. Oh, look at that. There's evidence of digging, which in my opinion, I think that's probably a squirrel. Last year I had tons of squirrels dig up onions to plant their own acorn trees. Yes, oak trees. They dug up my onions. They didn't eat them. They just uprooted them. And then they put acorns in their place. And I probably took like 50 oak trees out of one of my garden beds. That was, I guess, one of their little places to store up for the winter or the slow season. <laughs> anyway, yes. I really would feed my stuff again that's slow, like my cabbage, but with shoulder surgery, the reality is I'm probably not going to, and that's okay. I will let things, you know, we, we put a fresh layer of really good soil compost down, put more wood chips on top. I feel like all the rain is really helpful because we could turn the irrigation off and just let the rainwater feed the garden, and plants really like rainwater. So, it's just going to be kind of one of those type of gardens right now where we'll see how it goes and I'm not going to do a ton of intervention and let it go and then we'll see how my shoulder feels and what I feel up to as we'll be starting different seeds for the spring and for the summer and having to do all that transition. It's a lot of work. I think the winter garden is going to be more of a laid back garden. I do love the look though of all that garlic and there's some random onions, volunteers from last year but most of this is garlic. A little bit of chard over there. And these are purple cauliflower and this one looks like it's actually ready to pick. It didn't get very big at all. It's super small, but it is already kind of separating. So I think that this one is probably good. We took out the hibiscus plant from here. That's some cleanup we did. And also, look how beautiful this bed of lettuce and leeks look. My word, that is so pretty. I think we are ready to get another good sized salad. I'd like to do a roasted chicken with some garden potatoes and maybe a really big salad this week because this is just super lovely. These leeks are pretty close to harvesting some of them. They kind of became a perennial bed where we grow leeks here year round. I think there's a whole group of five there. These are some onions that are in a grouping. There are some different leeks over there. I really like that we can harvest leeks through the winter to use in place of onions. We use leeks like a substitute. They can be in their own recipes, but like tonight we're gonna make a sweet potato curry with chard and garlic, and we're actually gonna use some chopped up leeks in it. It calls for shallots, but our shallots aren't ready, but our leeks are. I actually have some chopped up leeks already in the freezer too. So we do them interchangeably sometimes, and I kind of like that about cooking. They have little different flavors, but having such abundant leeks, we can use them when the other stuff might not be ready yet. Seriously, you guys, I'm just loving this bed. I think this might be my favorite bed in the garden right now.
my son is re-wood chipping our paths to help with weeds and different stuff. And here's a strawberry bed. It looks kind of sad. It's dormant. It definitely needs to have some good pruning. You know, pulling out some of this dead stuff right here. I don't know if that is gonna happen anytime soon. I don't know if I can get my family to do that for me. So this might be a chore that waits for when my shoulder feels better. This next garden bed is also quite lovely and probably because it's so full of lettuce, just like the other one. We have lettuce, there's some alyssum over there in the corner. We have a bunch of onions in here and we have celery and I do need to pick some of that celery. It is quite beautiful. Some of it I have not picked yet and other parts are coming back up. I'll show you how that's working, but this is so pretty. We have some chives that are they want to be done for a while there, but we actually keep using them fresh, but you know, they do look a little sad. They'll come back really nice and healthy as soon as it's springtime, but different low lows make them tired. Look at how beautiful that celery is right there. I mean, this is some good stuff. I really like this. It's called celery de Aline, I think is how you say it. And I've really enjoyed this variety this year. You can see over here, that some of them I just cut at the soil line and they are growing back. So this will be more broccoli, probably in the spring. And then I'll harvest some of this during the winter. It'd be really good for some soups and bone broths. We have some chard on the end that we're gonna use some of that actually for dinner. It's a beautiful chard that we have harvested from for I think at least three years. It might be four years now. It's like a ruby red chard and we get a lot of food off of this thing. I mean, if you look in there, the stock thing on that is enormous and it's huge. It's like got tree branches and stuff. Now let's check on the radishes I had growing and I have a bunch of onions in a bed and I put more carrot seeds down and put boards on them so we can see what they look like in this bed too. Well, the onions are doing good. They're still pretty small, but they are there. No squirrels digging them up this year. The radishes are growing. They have some of their true leaves, but they're just slow, you know? They're not growing very fast and that's okay because it has been pretty cold and it's been very wet. Over here we have the boards and I put carrot seeds and it's been so cold, I doubt they're germinating. I don't see anything there yet. I do see some slugs on the bottom of the board. <gasps> yeah, that's about it. Slugs is all that I see right now. We'll check that again later. There's no rush, honestly. My sage is still big. I've been harvesting off of it, but it's kind of in a dormant stage too right now. I mean, it comes all the way out here and it has some wonderful fresh leaves I've used to brown in butter, saute them like in butter and have them on top of eggs. But I probably will still cut it back more before spring so that it's just not taking up the entire walkway. See that? It's just kind of hard to walk at all. Great. Okay, next we're going to do this bed. The garlic here is out of this world beautiful. I mean, it is huge. You guys, we planted over 300 cloves of garlic, four different varieties. So we're gonna have a really good garlic harvest sometime near Father's Day. I have calendula that overwinters here. We have some beets here on this end. We have tatsoi right here and it's doing better than last year. Last year was not a good year to compare it to. It was tiny, but this is doing better even though it does have some pressure, has some nibbling. It's okay. I'm okay with that. We have a ton of kale all the way down the middle. Dino kale. We have red Russian kale. We have cyber frill kale. The cyber frill kale is quite lovely. I mean, look at how the droplets are on it. It's super pretty. Like that is really gorgeous. And then I always love the color of the red Russian. I like anything that has a purpley red or pinkish tone to add into the garden. We have some calendula overwintering there in the corner. 
some little leeks there that actually my son took out of the compost and stuck in there and they they're growing they're doing great here's the other side of that bed with the tat soy and the garlic and the kale it's just very very beautiful over here this is a bed i really like too this year and we've eaten a lot of kale they might be small leaves but we've picked outer leaves quite a few times and enjoyed them in our food they're so delicious one of my favorite ways to eat kale is to saute it and put it with my scrambled eggs that is like so good in the morning can i hide this egg so the kids don't get it first i'll pick a couple pieces just in case okay pieces to go with my egg This should be good for breakfast. I love the garden. This is pretty awesome. Okay, we have one more bed to show you. Then I'm gonna pick some chard. We're gonna go in, make sweet potato curry. My boys are helping me a lot because I'm trying to get ready for my surgery. And one of the ways I wanted to get ready was to dehydrate a bunch of our garlic and to make more garlic powder. Slicing the garlic takes a while. That's how I dehydrate it. I slice it thinly. I need both hands for it. And I don't think my family is going to have the patience to help me with that chore while I'm not using my arm. This is the garlic that I've been slicing. A lot of it, peeling it. Some is hard neck, some is soft neck. I think this is what I'm not gonna use. This is what I'm gonna save to use fresh. It's a good amount of heads until we actually harvest for the summertime. So that's one of the things on my list to do before I have surgery is to get that garlic dehydrated. They can even be the ones that grind it up as the garlic powder, but I want to at least have that part done. My last bed to show you in the garden today, we have shallots right here on the end. We had butternut squash growing up this trellis in the summer, but now it's pretty quiet trellis. We have purple carpet alyssum over there. We have different onions on the edge of this bed. This was a pepper bed. You can still see the tags in there. They probably should pull out. But we have a bunch of onions all the way around the perimeter of the bed. Down at the end, we have snapdragons and calendula and a couple random onions from last year. Here is some calendula. It does bloom in the winter. I like that. It's not, you know, as many flowers as summertime or spring, but we do get some blooms. This is our snapdragon area. It is overwintering just fine. It looks a little bit sad, you know. It will come back all happy once we get some warmer temps. I have some bunching onions over here, and I also have some chives and then also regular onions. It's a lot of different stuff. We have some cilantro in the middle and some mustard there. We do have some more of that really pretty chard over here. We've had that one in the garden for quite a while. Isn't that a lovely color? It's like so deep. I mean, look at that. It's hard to convey to you how deep that color is. It is so gorgeous. I think I'm gonna pick from this one for dinner tonight. The leaves are small, but they're gonna be tender and they're really pretty. And then I want to give you a better view of this purple carpet alyssum. From a distance, you can't really see how pretty it is, but it is so, so beautiful. Super delicate. I like how it cascades out of the garden beds. We have it in a couple places and I love to have purple and pollinators also love purple. So it's a really good color flower to incorporate into your garden. And as always, I have volunteer California poppies all through my paths on the edges of beds. And I keep them there because I like when they bloom. And the pollinators like when they bloom too. And so we're both happy. Hey, if I like things in the pathways and I'm okay with it, it's my garden. That's how it goes. It's kind of funny. My husband was saying the other day that he'll say, what is this weed? I go, oh no, that's cilantro. Don't pull it. I know it's in the path, but we will eat dinner from it. <laughs> it's true. Well, thank you for joining me. I am going to pick my chard for dinner. I'm going to pick a little bit of cilantro for dinner. I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna get 
the rest of my garlic dehydrated that I was planning on dehydrating. Just get ready for this shoulder surgery. I will try to keep posting. I don't know what recovery looks like. It seems like it's gonna be a little slow, but I will try not to keep it silent around here, but I would appreciate your prayers. Any of you who pray, I love your prayers that the surgery goes smoothly and that recovery goes really, really well. And I will talk to you soon. I will bring you on a February garden tour. We'll see what that looks like. We'll see if it starts warming up a little bit before then or not. You never know. It, temps here in Northern California, they can be so erratic. We can have, well, we always have a lot of rain in the winter unless it's a drought, but sometimes we'll have like 80 degree days in February and you just don't know. You just don't know. So I hope it doesn't get hot too soon, but we'll see. We'll see what happens this year. It's always a wild adventure. Thank you. I'll see you soon. And thanks for joining my January garden tour.